Hey, everybody, welcome to Act Three. We are so glad that you tuned in today. On today's show, we are going to talk about proactive health, healthy living, healthy style, healthy fabulousness. And we have our own resident expert, Lee Soul Story. Now, get that name, Soul Story. That has got a whole lot for us to explore uh, just in her name alone. Her company is called Proactive Healthy Style. Our health style, is that right? Health style, yeah. proactive health style. You've got it, Kathy. Go. See, you got to get the names wrong if you want to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so I love if, it. If I, if I don't get your name right, I get your company wrong. If I get your company wrong, I get your name wrong. One, right, either way. Perfect. We're so glad that you're here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Lee, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm doing great. Yes. I'm, I'm having a fabulous day. It's beautiful out, and I live on Vancouver Island. What can be better? I know. We live in probably the best part of paradise there is. And even though there may be challenges going on in the world, on a sunny day here, it's just peaceful and lovely, hey? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So no. Lee, how about if you break down for us, what exactly is it that you do? Well, you know, that's a, that's a, it's a convoluted answer. I'll try to, to keep it fairly tight. So I have been in healthcare since I was 19. So that's when I started on my healthcare journey. I graduated as an RN at 21. That was back in the years of the two-year wonder. So it gives me, you're my age. And studied aromatherapy, herbalism, all sorts of different health modalities. So um, it's been my passion. And with that, I've, I've really developed my own um, holistic platform. Because so I was finding that when I was in the hospitals, Although we had trained in holistic medicine, it wasn't being practiced. And I found it really uh, challenging because I could see in my patients where you know, they needed to talk or there was an emotional issue causing stress, which caused the, the uh, morbidity that they were having. So for me, having that whole holistic platform to give to people and, and teach people how to stay healthy is is uh, is my goal. So I, I'll tell you a little story, Kathy. I remember, oh, I was probably, oh, 23, 24, and I was first introduced to tr traditional Chinese medicine. And what I heard there just sort of rocked my world. In China, um, you know, in, in TCM, the doctors don't get paid to make you, to, to intervene in sickness they get paid to keep you well. And my hands which just kind of went up in the air and I said, well, of course that makes sense because healthy bodies don't get sick. If we exactly. keep people healthy. Exactly. You know, then it, when the body is working properly, you're not getting hit with these different immune uh, problems that are going on. And what a way to think about health from a perspective of, of fruition as opposed to deficit. Yes, and, and that's that. That's where the name of my company came was for being proactive. It's not, and, and even medicine, for the most part, we tend to talk about prevention. You know, so like, don't smoke, so you won't get lung cancer. Well, how about let's work on breathing methods, um, understanding how our breath works, because that helps us to relax. It can control our emotional um, uh, emotional. Um, feelings. Um, practicing deep breathing can uh, clear the lungs, make us healthier for running, etc. So instead of just not smoking, let's get really healthy breathing. Yes, exactly. Right. And, and I think when we do have really healthy breathing, the desire to smoke changes as well. Because Absolutely. often, right, when, when I mean, smoking is one example, right? But anytime I think that we're using an outside source for our health, it's because there's something that's within our inside self that isn't able to, um, isn't able to properly assimilate to what's going on around us. Well, right? Absolutely. absolutely. And, and we look at the epidemics of today. Um, obesity is one of our epidemics. Um, depression is another one of the epidemics. Well, when you talk about obesity, yeah, we can look at calorie counting and exercise and things like this, and that's a really valuable piece of it. But let's dig a little bit deeper. Why are we overeating? What, what is the hole that's trying to be filled? I mean, we, we need to know what that is first exactly. before we can go in and be really successful with, with changing health styles and health practices. 
and, and sometimes it isn't even about what we're eating. It's what is our metabolism doing? What is the, what's yeah. happening in our blood? What's happening in the way that we are processing the, the, the carbohydrates in our body? And so many of us don't know what our levels are and basic blood work. No, they don't. Right? Uh, and most of us don't even understand how, the, how does the body work? And, and, and this is one of the things that I give a lot of lectures and I love doing it. Uh, one of my, um, one of my gifts in life, I guess, is I, I'm, I'm quite a nerd. I don't know if you know that about me, but I'm, I'm I very nerdy. Nerd. I love that you're a nerd. <laughs> I am very nerdy. And so I really, I really enjoy curling up with a good textbook. Okay. <laughs> it makes me happy. I find it like, I find it so um, inspiring. But what I'm good at is taking that information and distilling it down, not dumping it down, but distilling it down and putting the language into terms that people can understand. It's sort of like the old joke of, you know, do you know what bilateral suborbital ecchymosis is? Absolutely not. In fact, I don't think I could say it if I wanted to three times fast. Right. So that just means two black eyes. That's it. Oh my so, God. you know, so a lot of medical speak um, causes us to be distanced from it. So a lot of people can't understand what's what's in these really valuable textbooks. They, they read it and say, like, I don't have that language background. It's like, ha pass me a manual on electricity, I would be totally lost. Like, I know the switch goes up and down, and I'm not even sure about those circle ones. I can't figure those ones up. It's just <laughs> like, okay, but give me a medical book, I'm happy. Right. Well, and you know, that's the good news is that we're all been given these great gifts and, you know, each one of us yeah. has a, the, something that we bring to the table that's different. I think the thing that inspires me about what we're talking about today, though, is the mind and the spirit and the physical connection. Right? Absolutely. You know, to be able to understand that it's, you know, when our mental health is suffering, very often our body is suffering. When our body is suffering, very often some other philosophical, I can't even say the word. That Philosophical. Not philosophical, phil or physiological. That's the ticket. Um, when that starts, when that is not working as, along with our our spirit self, our physical self, our mental self, our overall, then then it's it's kind of like um, I think of First Nations. Um, the way First Nations people think, right? It's the quadrants that we have that make us whole, right? Yes. It's, it's something that comes from spirit, comes from body, that comes from mind, that comes from community, that comes from nurturing. And when all of them are in alignment, we have this sense of health. When something is off, that's when things start to change. And that's where you pull that wellness out for people, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's exactly where I do. And so one of, one of the things I developed over the years was um, a whole health planning course. The course is actually quite long, but we go into you know, body, mind, spirit, and energy as well, because energy is a very real thing. And, and when you start to understand how energy works in the body, it was the work of uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is the father of epigenetics. And what he discovered in his work was how we feel that chemical signature, because all emotion has um, all emotion has a chemical uh, molecule that's emitted. And that was the work of Dr. Candace Pert that she came, if you've ever read her books, Molecules of Emotion, it's brilliant. But we have these, uh, this, this chemical feed to our cells and there's different uh, pHs that go with this stuff. So it can change the pH around the cell, uh, which is going to change cellular function as well. But it also will it affects how our cells function. And for an example, just imagine right now that you feel like you are in love. <gasps> oh, you breathe deeply. Your shoulders are relaxed. There's butterflies all through your stomach. And you just feel like happy and everything goes your way, right? It's just like, yeah, yeah. That's it, really it, ever. Yeah, we all know it. Like everything just is like, wow. Yes. Now feel it. I want you to kind of go into that feeling of um, the opposite of the death. opposite. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something like, yeah, the boss hurt, right? The boss person just said something to you and you kind of went like, Oh, I'm not good enough. I didn't do that. You feel your spine curving and your shoulders coming down and you're, you're starting to get more tension in your gut and everything else. Well, all of that has a huge impact. You just look at our, our musculature 
in an emotional response when we have uh, muscles getting tenser that's reducing blood supply to an area it's going to re reduce the energy that we have because you need that blood supply to deliver oxygen to cells to go through the whole thing of creating energy as exactly. soon as you start start shutting down the uh, with, with muscular tension reducing blood flow to some place you're gonna not get rid of the junk not get oxygen in, nutrients in, et cetera. So our mood has a huge impact on our health. Well, in particular, if you have a prolonged feeling of non-worth or right. uh, sadness or frustration or anger, it starts to, you know, I, I mean, I, I hate to quote Oprah, but I'm gonna, right? <laughs> she, I, Oprah's a brilliant woman. She's she, worth quoting. I don't, I don't mean it like that. What I, but what I mean is, is that, that, you know, when, when I think about many, she said many things over the years that have been quite outstanding, but one thing that really um, stuck with me several years back is that she said when the universe comes knocking on your door it'll do a little gentle tap 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 and if you pay, don't pay attention to it and it's important that you learn the message or the lesson it'll come back and it'll tap a little harder yeah it'll tap a little harder and if you're still not getting it it'll tap down a little harder still not done is knocking the door down still not getting it it is going to take you out now i'm obviously not quoting her yeah it's basically the premise that when we're not paying attention to the things that are going on inside of our bodies, whether or not it's mental or physical or whatever, the universe, the, 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 the body itself will come back and keep trying to tell you. Our body is magical. It tells us what's wrong with us, but we stop listening. And this is a really interesting point that you're bringing up, Kathy, because I, I know that with our allopathic medical system, because it's an illness-based system, it responds to illness. I'm not dissing the system. It has some amazing things to it. Indeed. But when you go to the doctor's office and you're saying, like, oh, you know what, I'm starting to get, um, I've got this tingling in my toes, or I've got, um, I'm having night sweats. They're going to say, well, you're not sick. Because it's not having a functional thing, but it's the body is talking, as you were saying. And if you're not listening, it's going to speak louder and louder and louder until you are ill and requiring some sort of intervention. And we want to avoid going to that place where there's intervention. Now, many people who know me personally know that I have a chronic illness. I've had it for 30 years. Uh -huh. uh, it's called ulcerative colitis. Lots of people have, you know, Crohn's disease or similar conditions. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it can go into remission. And when it does, it goes in for a number of years. When it is not in remission, it is, I mean, it's not in remission now, as many people that are in my close uh -huh. circle friends know, uh, it's not in remission now. And so as a consequence of it, Everything that happens to my body right now is off the kilter of balance. There's, I mean, a side of my brain, which I can meditate and, you know, I can eat right and I can do all of those things. When the body is talking and it's awake and it's in a condition of dis-ease, which is really what disease is, yeah. dis-ease, then the, all of the other pieces come into play. So for example, one of my medications has recently stopped working. It's stopped working altogether. It is absolutely frustrating to me. Worked beautifully. Now it doesn't work at all. So what's happened is my dis-ease of the situation in trying to heal and self-regulate is making my condition worse because mentally I'm now saying, crap, this stupid, awful thing, it's in my, and you can't, because it's very painful, you can't get away from it. So your brain is actually manifesting more symptoms than it would if it were in its healing mode. So I have to, like many people who have chronic conditions, whether you know whether it's diabetes or cancer or heart disease or anything, when our mind is focused on the condition, we're not able to comfortably heal the condition because we're constantly putting ourselves in that area of absolutely absolutely yeah yeah i think you know my story as well i was diagnosed with with ms um 20 odd years ago with a you know it, it was an aggressive progressive and i was told i'd be in a wheelchair by the end of the year and i would never get out my god and i was quite si and i was quite sick at the time did a ton of research and i'm not in a wheelchair i'm actually very active and very healthy but for me it's become my barometer and I listen whenever I get little symptoms like, Oh, okay. What's what, what am I, what have I been changing? What am I, where am I not paying attention? Exactly. And I think that that is for me and I think for you and for people that have, you know, some awareness about this. Yeah. Like, okay. So what's my body trying to tell me right now? 
and how can I listen to it and move towards a healthy way of being around it and dealing with it and, and moving forward in, in back into healing. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, and the other thing that I find interesting is that as we get older, and I think that that's another concern, right? I have many of the people that are listening to Act 3, by the way, thank you again for tuning in to Act 3. You are listening to Act 3 on CHY 101.7. Um, but many of are older adults. And older adults sometimes, and I, this, I do not want to have a blanket, you know, all people. There's no such thing as absolutes. But many people who have gone through several difficult situations keep that negativity with them and then their bodies change along with that. Have you found that in your practice that as we get older, if we are, if we're not really paying attention, that we're finding that there's more challenges than there were? Yeah, I do. Well, it's cumulative effects, right? If you've had an entire lifetime of not taking care of your body, of eating um, processed foods and, you know, pop back a pop and a bag of chips or whatever every night yeah. for decades, um, it's going to have a long-term impact and it's going to take time for your system, longer time for your system to cleanse mm -hmm. and to get back into a state of balance. Because our, our bodies are beautifully and wonderfully made and it's a constant, uh, it's a constant um, shifting to create balance. So when we talk about homeostasis in the body, which is, is the body's balance, that point is always shifting depending on what's going on inside of the body. Mm -hmm. Now, when we want to elevate, even at, um, as our age advances, uh, we can still change our health outcomes. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, and we see this all the time with people that are, you know, have had a long history of, of pain and complaints, allergies, this, that, and the other thing. And they decide that they're changing their diet, and they're changing their mindset, and they're taking up exercise. And it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have pain anymore. I don't have those allergies. I don't have all this stuff anymore. So... I I think that where I was kind of going with that part of the question, though, wasn't so much in the person that has decided to make some health choices for the positive. I'm thinking about persons that are negative people. You know, the, the, there's, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? They're the, they're the people that are out there that nothing is ever good enough. You know, everything is bad. Their, their situation around them is just nasty. They just, you know, for something has oh. happened and triggered their life. Yeah, so this is, an, this is so easy. This is so easy when you say this. Like when we look at stress, we all know this word stress, responsible for 85% of, of um, lifestyle diseases. Absolutely. Go back to stress. Stress is our interpretation of events. Like we perceive the entire world around us through our five senses. And those five senses are feeding information into the limbic brain. We get a feeling yeah. That's what stress is. So if my feeling about the world is the world sucks, well, guess how much stress I'm putting in my body? Exactly. My, yeah. And my feeling about the world is like, wow, I live on Vancouver Island and I have this amazing place. I get to live in Nanaimo and I get to talk to you. Like, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. And I'm, I feel the same way. I have witnessed people that ha have got some of the worst health conditions by the nature of just, you know, whether it's cancer or otherwise, but their outlook on life is so oh. magnificent, right? I, I, one of my favorite people on the planet lives in the UK, right? Okay. She is 96 years old right now, I think. She, yeah. had, she had a double mastectomy when she was, oh my heavens, I guess she was 61 or 62. Okay. Um, she has now, she had about 10 years ago was awarded, uh, um, basically a, a dame ship, right. From the, oh, wow. herself. Okay. um, and the thing I love about her, this woman is that she had a double vasectomy and said, and I got stuff to do, like get out of my way. Right. Yeah. So she went and worked in the prisons and she was a good Samaritan and, and Samaritans in, in England are, are high esteem for working with, you know, populations of people that would not be worked with by the majority of people. Okay. So, so her purpose in life, 96 years old, she's still going to the bloody prison. 
I I love what you just said there. She had purpose in life. And so when we talk about mind, body, spirit, medicine, a lot of people don't understand the spirit part of medicine. So when I talk about that, about spirit, there's, there's, it's not necessarily a relationship with, with the creator, whoever the creator might be for you or not be. We talk about soul health. It's meeting the needs for, um, security, connection, creativity, competency, meaning and purpose. Um, there's another one that's not coming to mind right now. But, but when we look at that, so she's living her purpose. When you're living your purpose, that's, that's like rocket fuel. It's totally rocket fuel. And that's what you're doing. Yes. I believe that's what you're doing. Yes, it is what I'm doing. I love it. I love what I do. Just so that people know, in case they just tuned in, uh, in the video booth bomb, I don't know what we want. The, the, Zoom, the Zoom world, in the, the Zoom, Zoom box. World, in the Zoom box, in the Zoom box uh, is Lee Soul's story. And she is the owner of Proactive Health. So, you know, I often, admit, you know, earlier in the program, tell people to go grab a piece of paper and a pen because people are going to want to reach out to you, Lee. They're going to want to talk about where, you know, how they can get more information. So uh, just telling everybody now, go grab your paper and a pen and in in a few minutes we're going to give you that information so that lee can share some more information with you um, but in the meantime we're super glad that you've tuned in you have tuned in to act three on chly 101.7 lee i just i'm really i'm so excited to have you here because, <laughs> because i love the way you think right i love the way you can you know take take what's going on in our body and make it so that people can understand it so comfortably and so easily. You know, what, I mean, what for you has been, you know, that kind of key to keep you, you know, moving forward in this direction and doing this kind of work? I love this question. I totally love it. And I mean, it's been something that's been with me all my life. Uh, Remember you're back in grade school or something, your teacher says, if you ever fill your potential, fulfill your potential. <laughs> well, I think that you know we're, we're constantly evolving as human beings. I'm constantly evolving as a human being. I'm entering the third act. I've done the first act. I've done the second act. I'm in third act now. Look at all that experience I've got. It's yeah. amazing. So for me, I am still fulfilling my potential. I'm still evolving. I'm still, um, you know, how, how am I create my best me possible each and every day? And for me, that is, uh, it gives a richness to life. Mm. It gives me direction in life. And I know that the, in my, within my circle of friends, I can tell who is saying, hey, how do I maximize my personal potential? And yeah. you watch their lives just unfold with such brilliance and beauty and deeply satisfying encounters and it's not to say that people that are fulfilling their purpose don't have you know bad days or challenges or awkward moments or any of those things it just means that they don't get stuck in the mud on the long term right it's like exactly you know we can give ourselves permission to feel like you know crap for a little bit it's okay there's nothing wrong with it it's a real emotion you know the universe has given us that emotion for a reason sometimes it's for self-preservation sometimes it's for you know just to take some time out sometimes it's the door knock that says you need to stop yeah. right? you're doing way too much or you need a break or a breath um so it's not to say that you know every day is a perfect day because you're living your dream no well this is what emotional intelligence is right is understanding exactly. what your emotions are telling you and we, we know now that emotional intelligence is as important as any other kind of intelligence. More so. More, so. more so. More yeah. so. People with high emotional intelligence tend to be more successful in life. Yeah. And in fact, people from a business perspective over, I would say, since the book Emotional Intelligence was written um, some time back, um, you know, people have started to really, from a business perspective, they've gotten onto that bandwagon and they're much more interested in someone's emotional intelligence than their university degree at this point. Which is, which is really intelligent. <laughs> I, at the end of the day, I absolutely think so as well. Uh-huh. 
But you know, some of the things that we talked about earlier in our conversation have to do with wellness planning. So let's come back to that a little bit. What might wellness planning look like for someone who just really doesn't know what that even means? Well, you know, I, I do provide a course on that and it's an online course that I'm doing, but in, in a nutshell, Kathy, it's looking at the body from the perspective of mind, body, spirit, and energy. And how do I, you know, what are my goals in each of those areas? Where am I right now? And then, and then developing the steps to get to our, our goals. But along the way, you need some help. We have all sorts of different tools to use, like um, willpower is say one. So here's a, a little, a, a sweet little gem for you. So willpower is a muscle. And like any muscle, it can get fatigued. Um, one of the things that really fatigues it is low blood pressure. So if you are, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure you get your regular meal so your blood sugar is staying stable. When your blood sugar plummets, you're going to go for the first thing that you see food-wise, and it's usually going to be junk food or uh, quick carbohydrates or something like that just to fill the hunger, the hunger monster. So, and the other thing with willpower is it gets tired. Mm. You know? You're going to you find about 50% of the time we can use our willpower to power through something, but 50% of the time we're probably not going to make it. So if you are, say, well, most common one I think is dieting, get the junk food out of the house. Don't put it away for some other time because you don't want to waste that. Throw it out because when, when you get triggered by it, you're, you're, you're sort of... Um, taking a bit of the energy away from willpower. So if I can just put all the junk food away, well, that's, you know, that, that's so many um, accesses to my willpower that I don't have to exercise. Absolutely. When it's not in the house, you can, you might be teased by the concept, but if it's three o'clock, well, I was going to say three o'clock in the morning, but at three o'clock in the morning, you should be sleeping, I hope. Uh, but whatever, you know, it, late in the afternoon, that afternoon buzz. Right. It, if you've got a bag of chips in the corner and you've got a, you know, a celery and, you know, a piece of celery carrot, peanut butter, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're probably not going to choose that. You're going to choose something, you know, that's readily available. I think because we're in a, we're in a, um, I don't have time for that, right? It's yes. as much time to cut a piece of celery and peanut butter as it really does to go into the cupboard, dig out the bag, you know, pull the bag, but it's priority. It is. And, and like I have willpower. I have it, yeah. Yeah. And and with willpower, priority is is not right. yeah, no, it's it's a fallacy. Besides willpower though, there's other muscles that we often are not using, right? Well, well there's also, you know, looking for the mind so we can do reframing of things. So um uh, say you're at work and you have a job that you're not particularly enjoying, it is boring. And you're thinking of, okay, I've got another twenty minutes, I've got to do this. This is the what am I doing? right? And mm -hmm. it's really hard to get through that. But if we look at why am I doing this? Oh, I'm making enough money to X. So yeah. when, we, when we can reframe things um, from a what to a why, that's w when necessary. It's a huge. Or when we come across something difficult, you don't want to be motivated by the why because it's just like, oh, I don't understand this. So we go back to the what, but we break it down into smaller doable steps mm. and now we can approach it. So mm -hmm. there's all sorts of um, you know, tricks in reframing things, um, figuring out what kind of motivation that you have. Like some people are motivated by achievement. Some people are motivated by fear. Yes. And right? speaking of fear, because fear right now is rampant in our communities, particularly with COVID-19. Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, how can we reframe that feeling of paralyzation that people have when they're in their homes over long periods? What, what might you suggest from a health proactive, uh, you know, re, re, readjusting? What, what might you say to someone? I, I think this is the most brilliant time. It's, a, it's an amazing time for a reset. Uh, is to you know sit back and reevaluate your goals in life and what your priorities are in life, um, and then and you know coming up with a plan. What are the new habits that I want to embody? And I, and for many people that I've talked to, they have loved this COVID because it's given them time to stop, to reflect on their life, um, to really 
uh, analyze what kind of communication do I have? What kind of skills? So it's a great line. I mean, we have COVID-19, we have a pandemic and we have the internet. <laughs> we, can, yeah. we can do anything. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I just, I'm astounded. I'm also, like for myself, and, and I, I don't, um, I, I, I'm struggling with a lot of the negativity that people have about being home. You see a lot of it, like people are frustrated about being at home. Not everybody. There's lots of people that are like completely loving it and, and they're taking that time to do something really that they've always wanted to do. Many people are working at home. They actually haven't had any breaks. Others are raising their children and they're looking after their kids at home, homeschooling at the same time, working at the same time, at the same time, at the same time. So they're not seeing the break, nor are they necessarily seeing anything except a leveling it's all become you know their home is their everything right uh for business for home for pleasure for all of it and so for some people i am seeing that the frustration and the fear that's attached to it is that they cannot sustain this and yet we keep you know you know at the time that this is broadcasting you know we will have been in a, a pause moment or stay at home you know uh concept since the middle of March, which is really two and a half months, three months. And it's for some people that two and a half, three months has just been too much. And yet many of the older adults had to deal with hardships over long periods of time, years in fact. So I think that we need to put into perspective sometimes, you know, what is our expectation of ourselves? What is the expectation we have of our family? What is the expectation we have of this disease? And how can we manage those expectations so it's not so fear-based? Well, I, I really like that, you know, the expectations. When, you know, what are our expectations? And um, oftentimes, I think speaking out your fear and actually with somebody that's a sounding board to say, is this a real thing? Like the, these fears that I'm voicing, um, you know, how real are they? And, and, and also, what are the next steps? I think that we often forget how amazing resiliently, how, how amazingly resilient we are as human beings, oh, yes. how, many, how much capacity that we do have to change, to adapt. Yes, yes. Uh, and I know that you know, people are, have fear of losing their jobs or losing their businesses. And, and that may in fact happen. But when we can step into a place of being okay with uncertainty because life is uncertain and when we can step into that uncertainty a little bit more and choose instead to respond to what is flowing towards us exactly and and, and it is a i mean it's it's a it's a huge um step in in our own evolution Mm -hmm. is to but but there's also this juiciness when we can live with uncertainty and live with being able to respond what's in our in in our sphere absolutely and, and finding what our resources are and the other one i would say too is cut yourself some slack i, I was talking to a woman the other day and she's like oh I'm, I'm sorry i didn't call you at six and i'm going I, I know what her situation is and she has umpteen things on her plate. It's like, sweetie, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, exactly. it's like, yes, you know, and, and I think we have to have some more compassion for each other. We all have lives that have stressors and busyness, et cetera. Yeah. And I love, I love that. I, I love the compassion piece. You know, we often will give so much more compassion and empathy to everybody else, but rarely do we afford that to ourselves as a luxury. Yeah. And it isn't a luxury. It, sh it is just, we need to be kinder to ourselves. It, it, it's, it should be a staple as bread and water uh, are staples. So yeah. compassion for self, right? Yeah. We're often much harder on ourselves than we are on the, the world around us. I think if, you know, if, if, if we talk to ourselves the way, or talk to our friends the way we talk to ourselves sometimes. You wouldn't have any friends. <laughs> Yeah, I stopped that a long time ago. I stopped it. So I, I don't, I, I, I just don't speak to myself in that, those ways anymore. And that's, and that I think part of the important lesson in life, right? It is, it is, is falling in love with yourself. Yeah. Treat, treat yourself as the beloved. Give yourself 
and I do this regularly, is give myself a candlelight bubble bath with a glass of wine. And just and relax. Music and just relax. Yeah. And we all can be compassionate to ourselves in different ways. It doesn't have to be necessarily, I mean, for my, for, for me, it's time out in the woods, right? Right. That's yeah. my gift. My gift to myself is being washed by the cedar trees as I walk underneath them. Right. That's I, need, beautiful. Yeah, I yeah. need to feel connected to, uh, to the forest and to the sea. I mean, I, I'm a sailor, yeah. so you know, I need, I need to have the elements around me and yes. that's for me is my nurturing, but nurturing comes as well from when you're saying something that's unkind about yourself, right? Like, you know, I'm, I, I'm sick all the time or this, this stupid disease or, or I feel this, or I feel that when we're beating ourselves up with that beloved beat up right. stick that we all have in the corner, when we can put that stick down and just say, well, you know what? Today was today. Tomorrow's another day. This afternoon's another day. In this moment, I feel, and I will feel different. Yeah. In and, and there's so many tools that we can use for that sort of stuff as well. And one, one of the things I've, uh, Suze Casey, who is, uh, wrote the book, Belief Repatterning, and she's a brilliant, brilliant woman. And she talks about the emotional charge card and is finding those things that make you happy. Like for you, it was, you know, if you're getting stressed you know, and we were talking, I might say, hey, Kathy, I hear, I hear some stress in your voice. You may, maybe would this be a wonderful time for you just to take a walk in the woods. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and noticing with our friends too, when our friends are feeling, you know, overwhelmed, right? Yeah. Especially and, right now, right? And, this, yeah, and, and asking your partner, if you, if you are living with somebody is asking them, what fills your emotional cup? You know, what can I do when you, when I see you getting stressed up, what would make you happy? Mm -hmm. what, what would what would make you know that you are loved and cared for and that you can de-stress a little bit what can I do for you in those places yes what does this moment look like to you yeah absolutely and, and one of the things who was I can't I was listening to a podcast the other day and it was just brilliant because a lot of people are finding the forced intimacy of COVID very very troublesome and his advice was this is your beloved Yes. Carry out acts of love. Yes. Don't try to be right. Try to love them. Yeah. And we love each other in our good and our bad, right? Yes. Some of the best teachings in relationship come from those frustrating moments, right? Uh -huh. They come from how, how we can work together as a team, right? Now, I myself, my team is my dogs and my friends <laughs> and my extended family and my extended friends in that regard. Um, and what I know for sure is, is that, it, that, that, that the intimacy of sharing isn't always from your spouse. The intimacy of sharing is with a good friend. The intimacy right now is on this show, Lee, you and I are being yes, intimate. Yes, absolutely. Speak, which yeah. Them very, you know, but, but not being afraid to actually say, this is how I feel. Because so many, so many people feel like they're being judged if they are not doing things just a certain way. And lots of us, as we're in our 50s, 60s, 70s, we're past that now. It's like, yeah. you know, I could like bite me. But there's a lot, <laughs> a lot that gets us to that place before we yeah. even get there, right? Yeah. That you have to go through. We have, you know, our listeners. And again, thanks for tuning in to Act 3. But our listeners are from all age categories. You know, this is Malisapina Radio as well. So we've got people that are, you know, know in university right now and younger and all the way up into well into their you know third stage of life yeah and so like that that we we don't just get to a destination oh. a moment by moment transition by transition gray area by gray area argument by argument giggle by giggle you know it's a big big conversation this thing we call life it is and i would say like if you can be vulnerable Oh my gosh, the opening that happens as soon as we're vulnerable with each other and those areas like, I want to look smart, <laughs> you know, exactly. drop, it, drop it, be vulnerable instead, because all of a sudden you are opening up to another person and people come in. They do. And that, and Brene Brown has really written some terrific stuff. Oh, she has. Yes. I mean, we know Brene Brown is brilliant anyway. Daring Greatly, you know, The Gift of Imperfection. She has several books on this subject. Um, and some of the simplest teaching are just, you know, about her in the very beginning saying, if you're not in the ring with me fighting the battles I'm fighting, then you don't belong in my ring, right? Like, don't, don't judge me. 
you got about yeah. you, you know what I mean? And so I think that I think that it's really important that we are very aware that everybody has a story. Everybody has a different experience. No yeah. one's experience is the same, nor is one more correct or right than another. We are here to live our purpose, our life as individuals. And that train ride is an extraordinary one. It is. Lee's soul story is with us here on our Zoom call. Lee, we had told people a short bit ago that it was time for them to go get a paper and a pen. Now is the time for you to share your contact information. How can people learn more about you, Lee? So uh, my website is Proactive Health Style. All one word. And so health style is about, you know, we have a lifestyle. I do health style. So proactivehealthstyle.com. And if you want to reach me personally, you can always use my email, which is lee at proactivehealthstyle.com. Fantastic. Lee, as we're closing out the show now, we have to think about the most important things that this show is all about, which is sharing the life lesson, the, the takeaway, like the groovy of the groovy, you know, through all these years that you have perfected this mastery that you have over health and wellness. What's your walk away for this? What would you like to teach our audience today as a closing conversation? If I could have my life to live all over again, I would drop wanting to present myself as knowing everything and be vulnerable in relationships yeah. and and build emotional and i and build emotional intelligence mm, yeah i echo that i absolutely echo that i think that the more vulnerable we are the stronger we are Yes. It's okay to just have a different experience than other people, right? In exactly. fact, that's where the richness comes, isn't it? It is. And I think it's also when we're vulnerable, we become, we're more and more authentically who we are. I get to be me, not what I think that you want me to be. Yes. When I'm vulnerable, I get to be me, which well, is pretty darn cool. Well, I think you're a pretty darn cool chick. I don't <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm super darn glad that you came to the show today. Thank you so much. Thank for you so much, Kathy. It was absolutely a treat and a great pleasure. To our yeah. listeners, thank you so much for tuning in every Monday at one o'clock for Act Three. You know, it is truly a privilege to come to you every every Monday and to share the experiences and the stories of our guests. We look forward to presenting another great guest next week. So make sure you turn in on one o'clock. Uh, also, just to let you know, although we have been working on our television program, our studio is closed still at this time so our television program is still on the way but unfortunately it's going to be a little bit longer before we get to present for you meanwhile we are still a work in progress and we do hope that you will continue to join us on our journey to share act three with everyone in on vancouver island so thanks so much for tuning in we'll see you next time on act three bye for now <laughs>